Hi, my name is Donovan Keith. Uh, I'm a product manager at Maxon, and in this video, I want to talk about a new node, uh, something called the points modifier node, uh, which is available in scene nodes, new in 2024.5. And uh, it's a pretty useful new tool, and I think makes it much simpler to get started in scene nodes if you haven't really played with them in a while. So uh, it allows you to take a point and modify it in some way. So you can adjust the position, you can adjust the normal or the color. It allows you to add properties. So you can add a custom weight field, for example, or a custom uh, vertex color. You can also link together different properties. So uh, right here, I'm taking the normals of my mesh and I'm visualizing them by linking them to the colors. It also allows you to remap them in some way. So uh, here's a, no a nodes modifier that I've created. It's using actually a, a few different points modifiers and I can take a weight value from one of them and use it to adjust the strength of this effect with this uh, spline right here. And uh, last but not least is it allows you to affect just a certain uh, selection with your modifier. So um, I don't have a, a, a ready example for that, but you can you know make a point selection and restrict your effect to that points or polygon selection. So. Let's dive in to the basics of the points modifier and get started from there. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and create a new project file. And to this project file, um, I'm going to add a cube, let's say, and I'm going to go into my, uh, my nodes layout, and I'm just going to hide this um, console. And I'm now going to add a nodes modifier. So if I hit Shift C and I type in nodes, uh, I get a list of uh, scene nodes uh, capsules that I can bring in, and one of them is the nodes modifier. So I'm going to drag that under my cube here as a child. And now um, I'm going to be able to adjust the points of this cube. Uh, in order to use the points modifier, I need to add a points modifier. So I'm going to double click in here and add points modifier. And all of a sudden, my cube has disappeared. And that's because uh, before, it sort of knew, like, oh, I'm not doing anything in this graph. You can just go ahead and skip uh, executing it. But now it looks like I'm trying to do something, but I'm specifically not outputting anything. So I need to take my geometry uh, on one side, connect it to my points modifier, and connect this to my final output. And if I want, I can select this and tap the Q key to connect these up together. And um, I know that I'm going to be modifying a bunch of different points, so I'm going to just add a few uh, additional points to my cube to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So I'm going to set my segments to something like 20 by 20 by 20. And to make some of my math a little bit easier, I'm going to adjust the size of my cube to be, um, let's say, 1 by 1 by 1, or oh, 2 by 2 by 2, let's say. And then I'm going to tap my H key to frame it up. So if I look at this, got uh, a bunch of points, uh, all of them pretty close to uh, the uh, the world origin here. Now, in my points modifier, what can I do? Well, diving inside of here, we see that there are a number of inputs along the left-hand side and not quite as many outputs on along the right-hand side. So um, the ones that you see along the right are the values that you can write or change. So I can change the position, the normal, the color or a vertex or a weight map for a given point. And uh, along the left-hand side, we've got uh, some of those same things, position, normal, color, along with some helpers like neighbors uh, or ratio. Um, ratio is something I actually kind of like because it allows us to uh, see the index of a point uh, in a zero to one range. That'll be useful later. So. Uh, let's do something fairly simple. I want to control my position with my position. So I'm going to take my position on the left and wire it to the right. So now I'm saying take the input position for a given point and set the output of that point or set that point to be equal to the same value. So not the most exciting thing. What if I was to um, do a little bit of basic math on this? So if I do an add, um, I, I got this by double clicking to open up my, um, my commander here and I drag this right onto the wire, I now get a vector um, style addition with uh, values that I can change. And if I uh, set this to one, it shifts the whole thing over one unit or up on Y, same, same. And if I hold down option on my keyboard, I can sort of restrict to a finer grain of control. So that's what uh, adding will do. Um, what happens if I say, I don't know, take my position and add my normal to it? 
all of a sudden we get something that is um, a bit rounder in appearance. And that's because uh, we're looking at our, our sort of point normals here. And uh, some are sort of shifting off to the side. So can we do something like, I don't know, visualize a property? Uh, and yes, we can. So if we wanted, we could, uh, I mean, get rid of this math. I'm going to take my, my normal and I'm going to pipe that into my vertex color. And we get a new vertex color tag on our, on our cube here. So if I click on this, I can, uh, again, as of 2024.5, I can now preview this interactively. Now, um, challenge that I'm seeing here is that a lot of these values are totally black, and that doesn't seem correct. And that's because uh, our normals don't just uh, have positive values. They also have negative values. They can be facing uh, away from the direction of an axis. So what we need to do is, is bring these uh, normals into a friendlier range for our vertex color. So to do that, I'm going to use a range mapper node, and I'm going to drag it onto this wire. It's automatically grabbed the type, uh, a vector here. And what I want to do is say uh, that my input minimum uh, should be minus one, minus one, minus one. So we're saying that the, the lowest value we would expect for a normal is minus one, minus one, minus one. And instead of being minus one, it should, it should now be zero. So now we've, we've basically remapped our normals into a friendlier range. So what can we do here? What, what's something that's actually kind of uh, useful or fun? Well, what I want to do is build a simple displacement really so what i, what I want to do is be able to have a weight value like a, some sort of a strength and use that strength to control the movement of a point along its normal so uh, let's do a, a really simple displacement right so we've got our position and we are going to add our normal to it uh, let me just make this a vector type so adding our position at our normal like we had before and I'm going to pipe this output into my position. So I get this. And I can adjust sort of the strength or the height of my displacement if I just scale this normal. So the normal is the direction my surface is facing. So I'm going to add a scale node and drag that right onto my normal here. Uh, it's being scaled by 0, which is giving it no strength. If I scale it up uh, by a higher value, it's displacing it more. So uh, what if I wanted to? Um, you know, control the strength of this with something a little bit more interesting. Well, I can, if I want, go ahead and uh, use a noise value to control the strength of my displacement. So if I come in here and I search for sample noise, I get um, a noise value, which is a zero to one value that's sort of um, black and white, kind of random looking. I'm going to take my position as my input, and I'm going to feed that into this scale of the normal right here. And right now we're getting this sort of an effect, um, which looks interesting, but it's a little bit too bunched up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my noise, and I'm going to set the scale down to something smaller. And this is actually um, a frequency. So smaller values lead to lower frequency changes. And now we can see that our displacement is altering based on this noise that we're feeding in. So um, that's the basics of the points modifier. And we can get a little bit trickier. So let's say I want to, I don't know, um, limit this effect with a custom vertex map, a custom weight value uh, for my noise. So let's say I've got, I don't know, uh, maybe a slightly busier noise, and I want to limit the effect with a larger noise. And and you know what, maybe I'm going to go into my cube and increase the number of segments to something like 50 by 50 by 50, so it's a little bit more detailed. And um, and you know what, I think I'm going to switch to a sphere, because I think that's just going to be a prettier looking result. So let's create a sphere, radius of 1. Uh, let's crank up our segments and move our noise, nose modifier onto that. So now I've got my sphere and we are sort of modifying it. Let's crank up our points. Great. So I want to limit the, the impact of my noise with some value. So I'm going to scale the strength of my noise, the, the amount of this sort of displacement that's happening, 
based on some other value. So if I choose scale, I again, right now, default scale of zero has sort of made it invisible. Adjusting this value here, I can adjust the scale. And I want a zero to one value. So there's an easy zero to one value that I can grab, which is the ratio which is the point index. And we can kind of see that the points at the bottom have less, the points at the top have more. If we change the type of our sphere to something like an icosahedron, uh, you'll see this difference in the, uh, the point indexes, which is pretty revealing and, and kind of interesting. Um, or I can go back to my standard. And now that we know that, yeah, scaling by a value works, we want to choose a custom value for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of using the ratio value, use a vertex map. And right now, the, the default vertex map has no value. So we need to set a value on a vertex map so we can use that to control this. So um, this is my points modifier. I'm going to call this my noise modifier. And I'm going to add in a, another points modifier. And here, I again am going to do a sample noise, right? I'm going to input my position. And the result of this, I'm going to write to my vertex map. So um, it might be a little bit difficult to see, but this one is uh, noise weights. And this is um, noise displace. And it's being limited by this vertex map. And if I want, I can come in here and I can adjust my scale to something much, much smaller like this. And I might even choose to remap this in some way. So I can choose a spline mapper, drag it on here. And I'm just going to try and crank up the contrast so we can see there are going to be some regions with no effect, some with a lot. And I'm going to adjust my scale here to maybe like 0.5. And you begin to see, oh, yeah, the effect is really taking place in some areas, really not in others. And I can sort of crank up the contrast here. And you can get something kind of like uh, this. And if I wanted, um, I might also choose to do a color map. So I'm going to do another points modifier. I'm going to take my input here, and I'm going to take my vertex map. And I'm going to uh, put that through a gradient. So vertex map goes into position. The output goes to my vertex color. And I'm just going to choose, I don't know, um, this sort of black, violet, orange. And now as I look at my colors, we see they are remapping in this way. And if I want, I can um, you know, tweak the ways that these sort of interact. And I might actually say, you know what? this um, remapping of the noise. I don't want that to happen here. I want this remapping to happen inside of my noise displace. So now I've got a um, weight to gradient. And here I'm going to reload this preset with the black, violet, orange. So we've got this sort of nice uh, gradation of colors. Maybe I'll double this. We can get some uh, we can get some fun interactions here. So uh, this is the beauty of the points modifier is that uh, it allows you to take again take in points and change them in some way. You can add custom properties to them. You can link properties. You can remap them uh, using things like the spline mapper or the uh, the gradient, and you can uh, choose to affect just certain parts of it. And I guess I'll show you that that last thing um, really simply. So just to let's just pop open another scene. I'm going to add a plane. I'm going to add a nodes modifier. I'm going to add a points modifier. And I'm going to say I only want to affect points zero to twenty. I'm going to turn on only iterate selected, and I'm going to add 
my normal to my position and output this. And it's a pretty subtle change, so I'm gonna make this plane smaller so you can kind of see it a little bit easier. Uh, 10 by 10, frame it up. And we now see that those points that we have selected here, or we could say the even points, those are the ones that are being uh, affected here. So again, you can modify a point, add properties to it, link those properties, remap them, or only affect the selected. It's a really helpful and powerful node, and uh, it's the foundation of a lot of uh, great effects. Um, thank you so much for watching, and please post uh, any work that you create with this. Go ahead and post a link or, or talk about your, your process of using it.